Welcome to Split Russell Traction Device Practice Problem. Consider the Split Russell Traction Device shown in the diagram. The leg is held in the position shown by two weights connected to the leg via two cables. The combined weight of the leg and the cast, W, is 300 newtons. Let's stop right here. We know now that the weight of the leg with the cast is 300 newtons, so we can add that to the diagram. The horizontal distance between points A and B is L, and the center of gravity is two-thirds of L along AB as measured from A. We can now add two distances to our sketch. L is between A and B, and two-thirds L between A and the center of gravity. The angle beta made by cable 2 at B is 45 degrees to the horizontal. Determine the tensions T1 and T2 in the cables, the weights W1 and W2, and the angle alpha that cable 1 makes to the horizontal in order that the leg remains in equilibrium at the position shown. We know beta is 45 degrees and we want to find T1, T2, W1, W2, and alpha. I know this can seem like one of those problems in which we have to find a lot of things, but we were given just a couple of values. Well, this is quite literally one of those problems, but you have the tools now to solve it. We shall start by stating our balance equations. Sigma fx equals zero and sigma fy equals zero are the force balance equations. Then we also have sigma mu O equals zero. I picked O, which is at the center of mass for the leg as my origin point for the moments. But remember, you can pick any point. Just keep in mind that some will make the calculations easier than others. I will label these equations 1, 2, and 3 so that we can keep track of which is which. Notice how we have three equations and five unknowns. Is the system statically determinate? Your instinct will tell you no on just that fact. But notice how we need to find T1, T2, W1, and W2. Look at the sketch. The tension, T1, is actually equal to the weight, W1, that's pulling on the cable. Similarly, T2 is equal to W2. Thus, in reality, we only have three unknowns for the three equations. Let's start solving. Feel free to pause at any time to try the problem on your own. For equation one, we have two forces in the x direction. These are the x components of T1 and T2. Let's write the components in a format that allows us to isolate either T1 or T2 when we need to. Two, we can do the same with the balance of the vertical forces. The vertical forces will include T2, T1, and the weight W. Their sum equals zero. Remember to be mindful of signs. For equation three, remember we are taking the moment about O. This means that the moment due to the weight would be zero since the force line of action goes through O. Then the moment due to tension T1 is the vertical component of T1 times 2 thirds L. The moment due to T2 is the vertical component of T2 times 1 thirds L. We ignore the horizontal components because their line of actions go through O. Five, that's all equal to zero. Notice my choice for positive and negative moments depending on how the forces affect point zero. You can decide to flip the signs and still get the same answers. Let's now move some things around and simplify these equations. We can find alpha by solving for T2 in equation three, then plugging equations three into one. That's possible because T1 simplifies out of the expression. We end up with alpha equal to 26.57 degrees. We can then use the expression from equation three solved for T2 into equation two to find T1. Values simplify nicely and we can solve for T1. We learn that T1 equals 223.6 newtons. Finally, we can plug alpha and T1 into the simplified expression for equation one. We end up with T2 equals 282.83 newtons. Remember now that it also asked for W1 and W2. 
But as we concluded earlier, W1 equals T1 and W2 equals T2. And now you're good to go.